bad emotions, and they said, she's upset, she's happy, she's excited. I love my Jack. Here's why I love my Jack, okay? We're gonna learn tonight about what today's seventh grade looks like. Not like what, but who they are. I'm gonna tell you why I love my job, what I do to teach my job, and then I'm also gonna share with you what I think seventh graders can teach us adults. That's right, I think seventh graders have stuff to teach us. So try and guess which one is me, the seventh grade one, I want the one. And if you think about, I, in 1994, I was in the seventh grade. It was the heart of grunge. Kurt Cobain was all over the place. Uh, grunge music, flannel clothes, dark, depressing things, coffee, absolute moodiness. The definition of me as a seventh grader. Today's seventh grader probably has some of those same emotions, many emotions. But they also have an incredible amount of interconnectivity to this world. It's not just Twitter. It's just not Facebook. It's everything is instantaneous and kind of hazardous, but really fun. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. I just, I just love it. This is what I call a mental map of what's going on, I think, inside of a seventh grade's head, seventh grader's head. I don't know if they really have Joe Jet jumping up and down, but it is bold, it is fun, it is chaotic, it is a little bit rebellious, but whatever it is, it cannot be boring. Boring does not exist in their vocabulary because they will let you know in an instant whether or not you're going to be boring. I just, I, these are two pictures from a castle building competition that we had in our class. And I just look at these dudes right here. I mean, how cool are they? They're not even trying. You just look. This is passion of 12-year-old, 13-year-old boys, and they can't even help it. And this is why I love teaching seventh graders attitude. Look at that. You can't market that. You show up. You want to be passionate people. You want to inspire kids. Look, you can bore them in an instant, and I think that that is a sin, but it is not hard to impress them. All I can do is I can stand on the table, they're like, why are you sitting on a table? Why are you sitting in a chair? It's not hard. I love seventh grade because it's a time of soul searching. They don't have to figure it out. They know they're not little kids. They know they're not grown up. But you can be the most shy, timid kid in inside. They are a tiger. And you can be a bully and they just have the softest soul that you have to be tender with. It's a good job. It's a challenging job. I do a little more to teach the ABCs. You may wonder I teach civics. No, I'm not a nun, but I do think of it like I have a hundred postulates. I have a finite amount of time to impress my system of education on these kids. And you know what? They will buy into it because I can sell it to them. They buy into my system of education because this is what I plan to teach them. I want to make global citizens. I want to tell them that life is an adventure, that imagination is imperative, that you have to have a sense of humor, Respect is the foundation and organization is key. You can have an awesome lesson, but if it's not organized, then they're really not going to get anything out of it. This is what I go with. I have to have high standards. They talk about, you know, seventh graders are terrified. They're not to me because these are my expectations. That you have to have respect, that you have to treat things equally, that you have to have ambition. And above all, you get to choose the legacy that you leave. And that if you choose to make your lasting impression both in the classroom and in the world, you can do amazing things. Every quarter, I start off with the same speech. It's a fun class. It's not an easy class. I hope you learn a whole bunch of cool stuff, but get over it, because it's not all going to be creating a castle in my classroom. Yes, we do a few little simulation to where I become Queen Amy the Fair. And they bow down to me, and they are my serfs. I don't even talk to half of them. But you know how I do speak with them? It's how you ask, it's how you say directions. When I want them to be quiet, I don't say shut your mouth, well, maybe. But I don't say that, I say guys, be ninjas, not elephants. Ninjas are cool and stuffy, and they will sneak up on you, and you might be dead afterwards. Do not be elephants, be ninjas. How I keep them engaged is I keep them guessing. Sometimes I'll be hiding in the classroom with the lights off, with my microphone in the corner, and I will say boom. Like, what is that all about? I said, there's no teacher in the room today. This is a lesson on anarchy. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> I keep them engaged, not through lots of words, but through treating visual images. If you think your life is on the line, I better know how to throw a knife. If it's funny, if it's gross, if it somehow matters, if it produces adventure and imagination, this is where we want our kids going. This is called cognitive dissonance. There's something wrong with this slide. It's to sell it off. It's telling me things and my brain doesn't know how to handle it. And you know what? That's good. Because that makes us pause. That makes us think. 
That makes us consider. That makes us take the extra look and then go back one more time instead of just saying, Dad, I got the answer. And here's the big one. Here's what seventh graders have to teach everybody in this room. It's time to laugh, people. There are a lot of serious things we can plug in and we can watch the news, but there's a place called Lake Titty Kaka. And that's real. And it's only 200 miles from Lake Poo Poo, and this map was drawn by a guy named Meter. That's real, you guys. So how do we save our schools? Yes, we have to bring in some humor. But we have to bring in personal responsibility and accountability for each individual. Not just for teachers, we can only do so much. But each student, if you require excellence of students, they want to be excellent. So what's their future hold? Every generation says the generation after them. Oh, I'm so scared it's going to happen when these kids get in charge. I'm so excited for when these kids get in charge. I get to have conversations with them, good, interesting, lovely conversations with them about their dreams and about their hopes for the future and what they want our world to look like. And it's different than any world that I could imagine. But you know what? I want to go there with them and I want to keep imagining. And so what my job is to imagine, to create, to inspire, and to be inspired in turn by kids. I hope you uh, were inspired in some ways. Thank you very much. Thank you. 